Hello, good morning and welcome. This is me. I'm Denise Oliver. This is Empowerment Hour here at Callan FM. How are you all doing this morning? I'm just checking everything's flowing. You know, you need to be sure all your lights are flashing all at the right time and everything like that. And everything looks cool to me. So, yes, how is everyone? Hope you're all well. It is a bit chillier, isn't it? Um, the sky is blue. There's lots of lovely fluffy clouds. The sun is shining and it's a bit chillier. I'm rubbing my hands because they feel that oh, bit chilly. And um, my guest this morning is Ben Calder. And Ben, um, not been in the studio with us for ages, have you now? It's probably been a, <laughs> a, at least a year, maybe well, maybe it's 18 months, two years again. even. Yeah, no. sure. No, it can't be that long, surely. It's been almost a it's year It's been a since while. A Let's just say it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I put out on social media this morning that you were coming in, that we're going to talk about Qigong yep. and that you're just back from Poland. Yep. Where do we start? <laughs> what would you like to start with? What would I like to start with? Well, I tell you what, just tell me just briefly, what is Qigong? So in a nutshell... In a nutshell, it's an easy form of Tai Chi. It's a, a mindful movement practice. I said it was probably a bit like Tai Chi. Yeah. People tend to know what that is, but not that particular word, Qigong. That's right. Am I even saying it correctly? Yeah, Qigong. Uh, I mean, again, I'm sure that uh, classic Chinese speakers would tell <laughs> us that maybe we could pronounce it much better than that. But yeah, for the, the purposes of us, us Westerners, Qigong is close enough. And it's a... It's a very interesting practice because a lot of people recognise Tai Chi but don't realise that technically that's a martial art and sure. it's part of the Qigong process. Okay. But Qigong in itself, there's over sort of 3,000 forms of Qigong and it's been used as a health practice throughout China for a good 3,000 years now. And how so, did you get into it? Um, by accidentally meeting my first teacher of Qigong, who was also called Ben, who was a, a man in his 80s at that point, uh, 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 an exhibition uh, of kind of holistic healing and health when I was 15 years old. And uh, he started teaching me how to stand. And uh, so standing practice is a core aspect of Qigong. Uh, an amazing way of aligning yourself, energizing yourself, helping to meditate and condition your body at the same time. And uh, I then kind of have just been on and off on it now for for about 28 years. And uh, giving my age away a little bit for those of you that are quick at your maths. <laughs> I can't add up, so and you're fine. <laughs> the, yeah, and for the last 10 years or so, I've, I've really been kind of dedicating myself and the last few years training in Life Force Qigong, which is a system that my brother developed uh, again over his experience of the last 25 years or so uh, which is an amazing kind of health practice and so I've just been doing the advanced level known as Shen uh, which is all about bringing the energy of the body up into the mind to access uh, the spirit of the universe uh, so powerful stuff that doesn't sound wonderful at all <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the studio it's, it's great good to, to have back. you here yeah, you're looking nice really well was the weather good in Poland it was beautiful yeah I, yeah we were actually in this really old uh, 19th century palace uh, wow. in the countryside uh, about midway between Warsaw and uh, Krakow. And uh, so there was lakes and trees and land. Sounds and terrible. It was awful, honestly. <laughs> I, I didn't have a good time at all. So how long were you there for? Uh, we were there for a week, <clears throat> uh, which uh, they're, they're pretty intense days. We would start, our first practice would start uh, two hours at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, and then we do breakfast and then we do uh, a, like a lecture. And then we'd have a lunch break and a, a little bit of a chill. And then we'd do another three-hour session uh, in the afternoon noon and then we'd have another break and then we'd do a final evening session so sometimes we weren't finishing until like 10 o'clock at night uh, but it, it it's amazing stuff we this particular training the advanced shen module and there are there are three kind of primary modules within life force qigong the the first the jing module focuses on clearing old patterns out of the physical body the second the qi module focuses on going into the uh, five element organs within chinese medicine clearing out the emotional residues yeah. and the advanced module the shen is going into what are known as the eight extraordinary vessels and this is clearing out your ancestral patterns and clearing out 
out all of the the deepest traumas and residues that you've been hanging on to for your whole life that interfere with you doing what you're meant to do in your life what the the blueprint of your uh, life's possibility is yeah. and and getting you back on track so it was some really deep stuff yeah. but it was amazing I'm like my the whole <laughs> top of my head it's like somebody's opened up this massive lantern to to the world and uh, uh, yeah I just I feel phenomenal today I love it that there's so many different possibilities out there in terms of um, therapies modalities what you know whatever word you want to use that if you're ready and you step into it you just get a change that you never thought was possible yeah. that you never ever thought you might experience yes and so what for you do you get has actually changed on all of those levels you've just mentioned I mean, I think the the first and most important thing with Qigong is the fact that a lot of us are very disconnected from our bodies. Yeah. So we have uh, a proprioceptive system, which is what kind of checks in on our balance. We have what's known as exteroceptive, which is our senses, our eyes, skin, you yeah. know, smell, touch, all the rest of that. But we also have what's known as the interoceptive system, which is our gut feeling. And most of us are deeply out of connection with that. It's all related in to the vagus nerve and the response that has through all the organs and a lot of us just have no idea what's going on and yet 90% of our parasympathetic nervous system is in free nerve endings in that vagus nerve and we have no idea what it's telling us so qigong initially really gets you in touch with how the past has contracted into your body and you've kind of limited potential within your body and being able to feel yourself again being able to encourage energy and flow and movement both physically and subtly through those tissues and really embody the body you know really feel it and and that changes the kinds of choices you make how you move how you experience phenomena that you uh, are in the world around you because you're not trying to deal with it at the level of mind you know you're actually really deeply connected into the body and you know again uh, as a uh, an access queen you'll you'll know fully <laughs> that that we are so many people just aren't listening to that so this is actually like a movement practice that really gets you back into that space and you literally start to feel part of yourself that you've never felt before yeah exactly and there's that whole thing of we just don't get our bodies do we no. we just forget that they are part of who we are we sort of lug them around from day to day sure. and don't actually acknowledge them sure aren't grateful for them you know we don't like the height of them the shape of them you know yeah, all of those really. sorts of things and we're so horrible yes. to our bodies Daily, yes. well, minute by minute, I think in some cases. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I love access consciousness for it bringing me back to my body and what it desires. But I haven't got, I'm not there 100%, yeah. you know, and I get how a practice like you've just done, yeah. um, what you've been doing since you were 15, is another add-on to all of that. Because yeah. bodies like to move. I can't keep mine still. I'm doing it <laughs> no, now. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, my hands have to move. I'm not good at sitting still. If I'm asked to sit still, I have to sit on my hands. <laughs> yeah. So that I'm... And I get the part of my movement is actually moving energy as well. Yes, yes. And when people say to me, well, that's a load of rubbish, it's just like, I can't tell you what energy is. Sure. You have to get there on sure. your own and you have to find a modality if you choose it if you wish to yeah. that's actually going to work for you but mm. I know it's there I can feel it pulsating in my hands sure. I've got that tingling it's there yes and um I once had a conversation with someone this is a long time ago and it's like it's ready to be birthed as a blog uh, and I said to this person I said so so you don't believe in energy I said so what color is the wind and they looked at me like what I said, what colour is the wind? <laughs> He's like, it hasn't got a colour. I said, no, it hasn't. But where is it? You know, when do you see it? Yeah. You know, if you want to see everything, you don't see everything. Yeah. 
scientists know that sub- subatomic particles exist, but they can't see them. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? and it's the same principle. Energy is energy. And it's also about the, the definition. So uh, one of the things that we look at within Life Force Qigong is the fact that every time you move one of your joints in your body, because of some of the residues of minerals in there, the crystalline structure that sits inside the joint creates a piezoelectric current. So you actually get mild electric currents that come just from movement which is one of the reasons why a sedentary lifestyle isn't so healthy for us because these electrical currents actually help with communication and other functions through the connective tissue, through the fascia. So it's it's not that we're talking about some spurious idea of energy. It's about being able to say, well, what is it that's actually driving your nerve function, driving those physical functions, and how can that improve? And, and it's amazing how easy I mean, my my brother is a master. I love working with him. And he can give almost anybody a palpable experience of their own bioenergy within minutes. Wow. You know, just by getting them to move. And there were the two of the these eight vessels, these eight extraordinary vessels that we were clearing, uh, which were the, uh, the, the yin and yang uh, wei mai. And they, they come with two really interesting questions because they're about our, our action in the world. No, actually, sorry, it's the, the chow mai, not the, the wei mai, the chow mai. Uh, they're about our action in the world and how we present ourselves. And he asked us two really easy questions, one for the yin, one for the yang. And the yin question is if you could be anybody who would you be and the yang question is if you could be anywhere geographically who would uh, where would you be and the trick answer to the both uh, to the <laughs> both of them is if you could be anybody and the answer isn't myself then there's an imbalance in that energy and if you could be anywhere and it isn't it's here in, yeah, right now yeah. there's an imbalance yeah. because you're not happy with this space yeah. and so you can't act through it yeah. and therefore you you actually disempower that part of yourself because you're wishing to be something or somewhere else yeah. so you don't have access to all the qualities that you do have it's interesting because as you said them, I thought oh let me listen to this so I got me to the first one <laughs> yeah, and I sure. got here to the yeah, second yeah, sure. one and it's like it can't be that simple yes. <laughs> and it is it is yeah yeah sure which I'm beautiful well done no imbalance in that uh, well, I'm sure we can Chamai find vessels. something somewhere <laughs> well those two sound good though yeah so Ben and I are talking about all sorts of things and he's got lots of things to tell you of um, stuff that's coming up so days in May a bar's day in April and also we are just having a little discussion amongst ourselves about the photograph that I saw him put on social media and it's a picture of you lying down park bench where or was this at your castle? I, I have to say <laughs> I was I was lying on the jetty of the lake of the palace. Oh okay. In the sun. As you do. <laughs> Sunbathing, <laughs> looking after myself. And you have your neck resting on mm-hmm. a what did you call it? A gravity neck rest. Yeah, it's a gravity cradle is the the term for it. And and what you can't see in the picture as well is I'm also on a triangular uh, part of it called a keystone that sits underneath my sacrum, so at the base oh, okay. of my spine. Yeah. And essentially what it's doing is it's floating you between those two points and allowing the the neck and the spine and the hips to release and realign. So uh, it was developed a couple of years ago, uh, actually up here in Chester, uh, and uh, was there for people with back and neck problems and uh, anything from headaches to sleep problems to inflammatory pain, uh, you know, especially good for people that are driving a lot, for sports people, uh, people that have had old injury, old trauma, and, and it's just uh, anybody that's got stress, uh, you know, isn't sleeping, and it's just really, really good at resetting the spine. Uh, and so I, I always take it traveling with me uh, because if I've been on a long car journey, long train journey, long plane journey, yeah. and then you're staying in a place where maybe the pillow or the mattress <laughs> don't quite <laughs> yeah. suit you, it's just a way of always being able to reset my my spine and uh, and help it to, uh, to be in the best alignment. So especially like when I'm doing the Qigong training, 
I don't want to use my practice time getting over my travel. Sure. So yeah. I, I want it to be advancing me. Yeah. Um, so the gravity was a way essentially of, of resetting from the travel and clearing out any residue from the travel. And how long on average would you spend lying with that? So uh, Gravity as an organisation recommend that you spend about 20 minutes on it. Uh, but depending on, on what I feel I need, I'll spend anywhere between about 10 and 20 uh, on there. Uh, and I, I don't use it every day now. I kind of just tend to use it when I need to. But it can be used comfortably up to twice a day. Um, and so it, it just... It's this mysterious kind of way of holding. It's a little bit like a cranial sacral mm. treatment in the fact that as you're getting held, the whole body goes into this parasympathetic relax, release, restore kind of mode and settles. And, I mean, I often feel like I'm going to go to sleep on it, and that's always my signal to get off uh, because I don't I don't want to fall asleep on it. Okay. Uh, it for me, it's uh, if I stay on it longer than about 25 minutes, it's more than I need. Need. Um, and so uh, I kind of just let my body do what it needs to. But I go into such deep relaxation with it. It's quite meditative in its yeah. process. Yeah, I was thinking that if somebody was doing short meditation, mm. it's a way of, of connecting the body mind in some way. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and it's such a light little thing as well. It comes in its own little bag. <laughs> so it's really easy to, to carry around and yeah. stuff. So how did you come across it? Uh, so through the Bowen Technique uh, organisation, uh, it's actually the first product in the history of the College of Bowen uh, Technique that they ha- and, and the College of the uh, the. Uh the College of Bowen Studies. Let me get that the right way around. It's the first product they've really endorsed. Okay. So uh, they were approached to take a look at it. Uh, and in fact, about two years ago, it was on Dragon's Den. Uh, and the dragons uh, weren't interested. Uh, and since then, it's gone on to internationally win loads of awards and is like doing super well. So, you know, the dragons aren't always right. Yeah, they didn't uh, get they, it. They, that's they missed all. Out on that one. <laughs> yeah. um, and when uh, the College of Bowen Studies uh, tested it and inspected, it, they were really impressed with how effective it was and saw it as a really good complement to Bowen technique because it gave people their own control. You know, they didn't have to come back for as many sessions. They found that the sessions that they were having, they were having better impact because they were able to support that themselves at home with just a simple, easy uh, home protocol. And so uh, the College of Bowen Studies, we now recommend it. Uh, and so all of my Bowen clients, I now now give them a gravity leaflet and uh, and because I'm, I'm connected with gravity uh, you can get an extra discount on me as well so all you have <laughs> to do cool. is, yeah all you have to do is use code integral uh, which obviously is is uh, there for my center uh, for integral health down in Shrewsbury and um, when you put the code in at the checkout I'll give you an extra 10 pounds off the retail price which is normally 79 pounds so you can get it for 69 pounds so where where do we go to find it what's the website gravity life dot com gravity life dot com I'm, I'm getting one they're brilliant i'll be really. there later i'll be ordering that <laughs> later yeah. who's it most suitable for back and neck pain sufferers headaches people with a lot of stress who have difficulty relaxing anybody with hip pains is there anyone it's not suitable for so i'm thinking pregnancy children uh, I mean, and I think always pregnancy is, is a good one to just double check with the physician before using. But apart from that, uh, open head wounds are the only things that uh, generally or anybody that's got uh, a compression or a break or anything else serious in the cervical spine in the neck uh, that again I would just double check with a clinician before uh, using that but the Gravity Life website itself has got a, a massive list of frequently asked questions about conditions that it can and can't be used with so uh, for some of the best information it's worth just going and checking on the website. Sounds like it would be one of those things that after say a yoga session mm-hmm. when you come to do that relaxation at yep. the end mm-hmm. this would yeah be I mean, it'd benefit. be brilliant uh, uh, basically after any exercise <laughs> class yeah uh, and especially anything where you've done any kind of high intensity high compression you know to you know so uh, spinning or heavy aerobics or something like that because yeah. again it just gives that relaxation side to it uh, again gardeners 
perfect if you've been in the garden, weird twisty behaviors, you know, and, and lifting stuff. It's that reset for the body as well. It's, a, a, I, know, I love it. Um, I mean, it, my, this is the first time my brother had had a chance to use it when we were in Poland. And again, he travels around the world a lot and he'd had a bit of a, a crick in his neck and his shoulders. And the first night he used it, he said, yeah, it was, it was nice and things are improving. And then after the second night, he just went, that's it. It sorted it. And he went, <laughs> can I keep this one? <laughs> so I had to leave mine with him in Poland. Uh, and I've got to, you know, as I only got back last night, I've got to reorder one for myself today as and well. And what's it made from? What are we looking at in terms of uh, material? It's, it's uh, the cradle itself is plastic. And then the, uh, the, the padding in it is like a soft uh, sort of foam uh, that goes in there. And the, the little bobbles that you'll see when you look at the keystone and the, and the, the cradle itself uh, are all slightly different heights. And so they, they adjust around and it's a one size fits all so it doesn't matter if you've got small neck big neck you know whatever uh you you kind of adjust it around to to fit you um and they they really are remarkable yeah i love them you do don't you yes yeah i'll be getting one later um so we've talked a lot about qigong and the gravity neck rests gravity cradle for your neck gravity cradle And if you do want one after listening to what he's just said, you go to gravitylife.com and you put in the code integral and you'll get £10 off. Is that a forever um, as far discount? As, as far as I'm aware, <laughs> until they until they tell me that, uh, that it isn't, uh, it, it is definitely a, a forever. That's for sure. Cool. Um, something that you've got coming up is um, something that's going to be happening in Shrewsbury in May, and it's May the 18th. That's right. So tell us all about this new Free From Festival that's coming up. Oh, that, that's exactly it. So this this is the first year at the uh, West Midlands Showground in Shrewsbury that they will be having the Frestival. So it's a family-friendly Free From Festival. And... Uh, there's going to be a, a whole series of things there, uh, everything from cooking, uh, learning, eating, drinking, playing, all with a free from theme. So things like low carb, vegan, dairy, gluten free, healthy lunchbox, free from technology, uh, a children's area that's all about being free from kind of uh, uh, electricity and, you know, just more natural stuff again, sugar free, uh, free from chocolates, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, Centre for Integral Health, we're going to have a stand there where we're going to be doing epigenetic body typing testing. uh, And I'm going to be giving a a lecture on uh, allergies and how they develop and why they're so prevalent at the moment. And um, and also on epigenetics and how our our genes inform how we respond to stuff and so on. And we've got great things like gluten free cooking with uh, Legina Masala, who is the most vivacious Indian <laughs> chef uh, and producer of spices that I've ever seen. Uh, we're also going to have things like uh, low carbon paleo inspired cooking with Chris Burt, uh, famous for Momonoki and, and the work down there in um, uh, Shrewsbury. And there's going to be a, a fibromyalgia uh, workshop as well. So we're going to be having like a, a panel discussion about fibromyalgia, you know, what kind of stuff has helped with that, reducing sugar intake, uh, raw chocolate and meditation. Uh, uh, sort of zero um, environmental impact anti-plastic stuff so there's just absolutely loads of stuff going on there um, regarding kind of the free from concept really what time are you doing your talk? My talk on uh, the allergies is 12.30 to 1 o'clock Okay, so only half an hour to talk about allergies. <laughs> I tell you, what, it's like it's like now, Denise. You know me; I can get ten words in, and uh, so I'm going to be doing a whistle stop tour. What I'll say to everybody is, what I suggest is you film it, play it back slower, because we're just going to head through and do this this burn. You into are the allergies express train of allergies. I am the extra, but you know, people can always come and talk to me afterwards sure. as well. So I'll be demoing and uh, kind of demonstrating all of that stuff as well, which would be really good for people to see as well. So is there any link, I mean, I haven't looked at any research, so I don't know, between allergies and things like autism? 
I mean, there, the autism d- just seems to be sure, growing. That there's definitely research that's indicating that gut dysbiosis is a significant factor within or, uh, within autism. So uh, we find, I mean, one of the weirdest pieces of research I've just come across recently is that fecal implants yeah. uh, are really helping to regenerate uh, both immune system and gut bacteria within autistics yeah. and, and seeing changes within their behavior and their function there and and again I mean uh, you may remember that before I was a kinesiologist my my previous life I used to work with children with extreme behavior autism and uh, down syndrome learning difficulties and so on and there is no doubt that there was massive issues around wheat around dairy around sugar with all of those children and the in the work that I've done subsequently since then when I've worked with children with similar conditions I've found that when we see the improvement in the diet when we take out the stuff that the gut isn't metabolizing properly because we get a weird kind of we get a lot of weird responses in the gut and we can create auto intoxication so even a lot of mental health issues can actually be put down to a lot of toxicity which isn't necessarily poisoning you know we think maybe of uh, of pesticides or of like mercury in the fish or something like that but even uh, foods that contain something like betaine which is naturally occurring yeah. in things like sugar Sugar beets and beetroot can have an auto intoxication for certain people. Uh, things like salicylates or um, uh, atropine, which is tomato toxin. You know, so for certain people, their bodies, and again, this is genetic basis. This is why the epigenetics is so important. People just don't metabolize them. Like I know, I don't metabolize casein and alpha solanine. Alpha solanine is found in the nightshade family. Yeah. So if I eat those, uh, especially the uh, the alpha solanine. I get much more arthritic pains and I actually start putting on like water retention weight that as soon as I come off the solanines, the weight goes and the arthritis symptoms go. Um, and so there's a correlation between quite a lot of medical issues around these food toxins. And yet all the foods that are in the groups are things that you would see as natural, Na- healthy, and healthy, yeah. But just for you as an individual might be contraindicated. Yeah, there's so many foods that I know my body just doesn't know what to do with sure exactly and and i can't explain that to anyone i just know it yeah and so there's a lot of stuff i don't i just don't have in the house anymore yeah just yeah. doesn't work for me so it's not going to work for anyone else as far as i'm concerned exactly at home yeah just sure. at home. <laughs> <laughs> well you know the person who does the shopping gets to choose there, don't <laughs> and the they? shopping sure. and the cooking yeah yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone just sneaks in what they like exactly and <laughs> that's fair that. isn't it yeah sure <laughs> oh it's totally fair i don't have a problem with that at all so remind us of the date and where this festival is going to be so that's may the 18th it's the west midland showground in shrewsbury and that's the festival the free from festival and uh, the facebook group is one of the best places uh, to, to come and find information about that but you can also i think it's festival.co.uk uh, to go through and you can pick up tickets and so on for that so this is there is an entry yes there charge. is but it's quite it's yeah, pretty yeah. moderate yeah. yeah that's cool so let's go back to what you and what you're doing so is there anything else on qigong you want to tell us about yeah so yeah, yeah always <laughs> So for, for people that have never uh, tried qigong before uh, really important to go out and find yourself a class go and yeah. Join a teacher. Remember, there are lots of different styles, lots of different ways of teaching and lots of different levels of practice. But just to go out and do a bit of mindful movement, Tai Chi, Qigong, beautiful practice to do. And then on the on the 19th of May, so the day after the festival, I'm going to be doing a whole day of practice in Shrewsbury. And I do a series of what are called five element days. So these relate to the Chinese five elements uh, and they all have a season. So in May, we'll be actually technically moving into the summer season practice. And that's all around the heart. Uh, so dealing with all of our love uh, and joy uh, and what it takes. <laughs> Or lack of it. If you have lack of it, turn up. (laughs) Experience all of that. And it's also fire element as well. So it's that passion and motivation in life. So we're going to be doing uh, practices to clear and tonify and boost the energy within the heart and really kind of strengthen the body and and build that up. Uh, So I'm really looking forward to to delivering that uh, the day after the festival. Uh, Obviously, we're going to be doing the festival. Um, And then before that, just at the end of this month, uh, on the 26th, I'm 
running uh, an Access Bars One Day Certified Practitioner Training down in Shrewsbury. Uh, and as as you know, uh, Bars is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, I almost go into my talking to puppies voice then. Hello, aren't you cute? You know, it's like doing Access Bars is like so exciting. So uh, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So how does how does Access Bars and acts, what you know of Access Consciousness and the Chi Gong how do they marry together for you? So I guess more than anything, they're all about clearing the old grot that we're hanging on to. <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I'm sure my mother's going to love me for saying this, but that's how she used to refer to, to underwear. You know, have, have you got rid of your grots? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like when you, when you raise the three boys, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. But, There's lots uh, of grot around. Lots yeah. of grot. Yeah, I only yeah, had sure. two and that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I love the fact that both of them are a clearing process. Um, and especially with the this advanced work that I've just been doing over in Poland, one of the channels, this main central channel that we've been clearing, which has the beautiful name Chong Mai, uh, is all about our potential. It's our blueprint. But it's also the place where our deepest traumas get lodged and get in the way of who we could be, who we have the potential to be. Yeah. So, And I see that parallel within Access as well, that as we clear away all of these layers of stuff and stuff and stuff, we reveal this person this energy this potential that we all have to create to contribute to the universe and i was on the way on the flight back yesterday i'm reading this beautiful book at the moment called nourishing destiny which is by uh, an integral acupuncturist from america called lonnie jarrett and he was talking about uh, just how heaven uh, and, and in his words the Tao, the the nature of the universe the potential of the universe is going to express itself anyway mm. and if it can't do it through you it doesn't care it, it will just <laughs> find another avenue to express it but it's given you a seed of itself to express and and it just wants to create life it wants to kind of grow and expand and become something even more than it already is it's its own exploration of its own potential yeah. and the that clearing of Chong Mai is allowing us to get into that space and again that that similarity that that bars is just getting rid of all of the nonsense that we tell ourselves that we can't we should we're not capable we're not good enough blah, 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 you know. <laughs> and the stuff that, that keeps us anxious and yeah. stressed and really not able to express who we truly be yeah that was what i got from the bars i'm i'm gonna see if i'm free on the 19th of may to come to your qigong day because cool. i'd love to do that i love chinese five elements i came across that in the nutritional healing course i did way back when yeah and it's i still go back to it now yeah. with the seasons the colors the emotions whatever's coming up yeah and the combination of those two for me for myself just is just phenomenal yeah. um yeah i love it how much time have we got we've still got three ish minutes two and a half three minutes what else do you want to tell us about what else is coming up for ben what's or are you moving into what am i of? moving into well i mean I've, I've just come back out of having done another one of my shadow workshops as well and uh it's one of the things that i've done earlier this year is that uh actually for uh Katafi conwy who are housing association uh, over in conwy i went over and I delivered a series of sessions for housing association residents to actually help them manage stress. Uh, and I was teaching them some access tools in there, teaching them a bit of shadow work, how to not be as reactive to uh, people and situations, how to be able to look at ourselves a little bit more. And so I'm kind of keen to kind of take the shadow on the road uh, <laughs> and, and encourage uh, different groups, different organizations that would like to see improvements in their management strategies that would like to see improvements in workplace relationships that would like to see changes in how people are connecting and dealing with each other especially in environments that can be stressful yeah. and kind of teaching them just some basic ways and tools of being able to uh for a start off, be kinder to each other be kinder to themselves just have that greater awareness that rarely is the world doing a thing to you a lot of the time we're doing it to ourselves and that if we can just shift that perspective and again this is another lovely part of access yeah. just 
interesting point of view you know just change <laughs> that point of view yeah <laughs> so that we can see it from a different direction and not feel so limited by it and actually start to find creative ways to be able to overcome things and the the sessions that I did uh, with Katafi Conwy it was beautiful and the, there was um, a lady there uh, who had some learning difficulties and was really struggling with the neighbor that lived underneath her so and, and it was a lot of stuff just going on in her head and and it was beautiful in the weeks that we were working together and I was only going in for two hours you know small group of people and started getting her to think about this situation in a different way and by the third week she said do you know what I see her and it doesn't bother me anymore and she was avoiding going out of her house in case she bumped into her she was avoiding going to certain places in her community because she'd seen her there and that just disappeared so you know to give people greater access to life to allow them to embrace their life more and really enjoy it and again coming back to that question of you know if I could be anybody who would I want to be I want to be myself yeah you know and if I could be anywhere where do I want to be I want to be here doing the things that excite me and and make me passionate and you know make me get up in bed in the morning and go yeah yeah and go yeah what else what else what else I'm excitable after all the qigong or anything (laughs) honestly (laughs) not at all (laughs) not that you're bouncing around like a little spring bunny or anything (laughs) no not at all um, so we are at the end of the show Ben thank you so much um, Denise, I mean, it's been ages you. since I've seen you so so grateful to you coming in thank, thank you, you so much. everyone who's listened today if you wish to listen again uh, you can do so from tomorrow afternoon all you have to do is go to callanfm.com and go to the listen again service look for empowerment hour click on that and then click on the little bar with the arrow and you can hear the show in totality for the coming week yay how does it get any better Thank you, everyone, for listening. Love you loads, and uh, I'll be back next week. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.